Welcome to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Norm Bolin. This week we're drift boat fishing for smallmouth bass on rivers in Ontario. Our guide is Ken Chandler. He's going to help us discover where to find the bass, what equipment to use, what flies to use, and the best tactics for guaranteeing success. It's going to be a great show. Stay with us. Steelhead taken here. This is a, a good example of the family Heptagenaeidae. This is why you need a lot of backing. On today's show, we're floating down a typical south central Ontario river. We're doing it with Ken Chandler from Fly Fishing Adventures. Ken is one of the most passionate and committed guides you'll ever meet. He's so dedicated, he even built his own gorgeous custom drift boat. Every piece done by hand. It's perfect for rivers like this. Most of the season, the water flows quite slowly. In places, it's only a few inches deep, and there are lots of fallen trees, boulders, and other structure. Ken's boat is very stable. It has a shallow draft. It goes places most boats can't. With his oars and lots of muscle, Ken quickly puts me in position to hit all the best spots. He can drop anchor on a dime. It's a dream to fish from. So Ken, what's the most important thing for a first-time uh, river bass fisherman to be thinking about? Patience would be probably the most important key. Um, giving your fly enough time to settle before you start retrieving it. Generally, when that fly first hits, if it's nice and close to the bank, it's going to get that fish's attention. By letting it sit there, it's going to really stir their strike, so to speak and uh, after the first pop they're guaranteed to come up and take it so and uh, the second key would be once that fish has taken it give it a second to turn head back down to the bottom to set the hook if you set too quickly you can pull the fly right out of the fish's mouth you don't want to rush anything and get fish fever and uh, be overcome and uh, just no, take I your can, time we can slow the boat down and cover every inch of this river that's the beauty of the drift boat is we can get within really close casting range for anybody so it's, it's never a hurry. We're never going to go past the water and not be able to roll back up or slow the boat down and fish it thoroughly. Right. Our target fish today are smallmouth bass. I'm casting popper flies tight to the bank. The tighter the better. Then I'm doing short strips to imitate something tasty falling in the water. The stripping makes the fly gurgle and pop on the surface. And that gives the illusion of something alive trying to get away. Bass just can't resist that. But there are other species in here too we could hook up with a muskie or a pike. What we're doing here, Norm is casting a, a medium-sized popper to a back eddy. Back eddies tend to hold a lot of fish. It's out of the main current, and it brings, circles a lot of food, bait fish, into the fish, where they don't have to work against that current to feed. Ultimately, we want to land that fly right on the bank, like a frog falling off the bank, or a grasshopper, cricket, pretty much anything. Let the fly sit for a moment, get the fish's attention, and then after the first or second pop, we're pausing. Pop, pause. Good shot. And what we're also doing is covering as much water as possible, laying that popper down about every two feet. What we've got here is a back eddy with a lot of structure, some wood, lots of big rocks, excellent place for fish to hold. So by covering the bank every two feet, you're being sure to cover every inch, to give every fish an opportunity to see that fly. Now Norm's also looking ahead, planning his next cast, looking for the next piece of structure to concentrate his cast on. Excellent cast. So this fish, again, I was uh, fishing close to the bank and, and he just, he came about 10 or 15 feet right for that popper and just hammered it. 
I'm going to pull you a little closer to the bank. He took it right here in this uh, cold water with a bit of a spring coming out of the bank here, which you wouldn't expect, actually, because the water's a little colder. <laughs> Jumper. Yeah. Yeah, they're really lively fish. They, for their size, they really fight well. Uh, these well bass. Done, Norm. Good cast. Thank right you. on the money. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Nice right, fish. Let's bring them in. It's amazing how much power these fish have for. Uh, oh, just swing them over. Excellent yeah. job. There we go. Well done. Thank you. Very nice. Let's see if we can get that popper out. So let's um, let's take a look at that fish. There you go, Ontario smallmouth bass. Good little fighters. They love those surface popper flies. They just take them really, really aggressively. This fish, I could see him coming 15, 20 feet through the water, just going for that popper from the from the bank. Just gonna let him go nice and easy here. Ken. Good job. Good job. Ah, very nice. Well, that's what we came for. Beautiful. Bass are a schooling fish. Where you catch one, you're likely to find others. So when you do locate bass, it's always a good idea to fish the area thoroughly. So what we've got here is uh a rod that's specifically designed for smallmouth fishing. It's been designed for tournament fishermen. It's a lot shorter than most nine foot rods. It's seven foot 11, four piece rod. It's designed to cast a 290 grain weight fly line. Uh, the idea is to be able to cast big weight resistant flies with a single pickup and lay back down. So you're covering as much water as you can in a very short amount of time. Very accurate with the short length. It's perfectly designed for smallmouth fishing best with poppers, very good with streamers. Even if you add a sink tip to the system, it works very, very well. Ultimate rod for, for smallmouth. Perfect rod for a drift boat, perfect rod for anybody doing some weight angling. Gets you on the fish, gets you on the target. Very accurate, quick, accurate rod. Over millions of years, bass have evolved into finely tuned predators. They spend their lives locating, stalking, catching, and devouring food. Like all predators, they have to be efficient. They can't waste energy chasing prey that's hard to get, and they can't pass up an easy meal. They will eat whatever they happen upon, so putting a food imitation right in front of them is a surefire way to provoke a strike. Bass and lots of other species just love structure, overhanging branches, sunken logs or brush, rocks, foam, back eddies, and undercurrent banks. Structure gives cover that protects fish from predators. Often, it slows the current. Fish hang in the slower current, waiting to ambush passing bait fish and other food sources. They'll also grab anything that falls or jumps into the water. Another thing that fish like about cover is that it often reduces direct sunlight. Fish can't close their eyes, so they love shady spots. Fishing cover is the key to finding and catching bass. We've got some great structure here. We're going to try and get the popper really in close to the bank and then pop it in the water. Let it sit for a couple of seconds and some nice short hand strips with a little bit of wrist action. And hope a fish comes out and goes for it. They like to, uh, they like to attack things that fall in the water and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to Imitate something that would fall in the water, a frog perhaps. Be tasty for them. Any increase in water temperature is going to stimulate these fish. So even if it's a half a degree, they'll become more active. They may not fight, they may not jump as hard as they normally would, but they'll, that feed bag will start. I have to say I'm loving this uh, specialized sage bass rod, short rod with the stiff action. I've learned to slow my cast down and let the rod do the work and it's really uh, very, very accurate, very effective. So this morning we've been uh, fishing poppers on the surface for smallmouth river fishing and uh, 
We haven't had much success. We know there's lots of fish in here, uh, but they're not taking the poppers. So we're going to change over to a sink tip line uh, with a crayfish on it and uh, see if we can get some success underwater. We think the problem is uh, water temperature. Uh, it's 68 and a half degrees, even though the air temperature is really warm today. The water temperature is quite cool for this time of year, and that's because we've had really cool nights lately and the water cools off overnight. Also, the, um, the bass are feeding on hexagenia uh, hatches, and um, that's gorging them, and uh, they're gorging in the evening, and uh, they're not that hungry in the morning. So we're going to see if the crayfish will uh, maybe change that up and uh, give us a little more success. Typical Ontario rivers are teeming with all kinds of aquatic life. Minnows, leeches, crayfish, not to mention terrestrials, such as grasshoppers. That makes for lots of food for bass, and lots of food means big fish. River bass grow slowly. An 18-inch Ontario bass can be more than 20 years old. River bass grow so slowly because rivers warm slowly in spring and cool quickly in fall. When the water's cold, the bass are less active and feed less. So we're fishing here now with a crayfish pattern and a sink tip, and we're just drifting and it's almost a, a high sticking technique here. What we're trying to imitate here is a crayfish that's lost its grip and is just free floating down the river frantically. And we're hoping a bass will come and we're getting this lower water now, so you can drop the rod tip, maintain that nice slow retrieve. I see. So we high stick in the fast water, and we uh, do a slow retrieve in the slower water. And we're just imitating a drifting crayfish. Closer to the bank, you're going to find the fish that are the most active. They're, right. they're fish that are looking to ambush, be it a minnow or a frog that falls in, or a residual hex spinner that. Uh, that could be floating down from last night's spinnerfall. So it's always good to catch close to the bank. Uh, those fish are going to be close to the bank, within five or six feet. They may not be right on it. But it's always good to catch to that bank. That's where a majority of their structure is going to be. That's where they're going to be the most comfortable. Well, we uh, weren't having any luck with uh, poppers. Fish just weren't taking them. So we put on a crayfish. There was a ledge here about 20 feet out from the bank and we just drifted it deep waited it's got lead eyes in that water and five seconds after i let it sink down let out some line it just took and uh beautiful beautiful fish because we're on a sinking tip it almost set it set the hook itself we got a nice fish here it's very exciting it's the first one we got here on the uh, crayfish ken told us there was going to be a fish here and there was. I wouldn't be surprised if he has a name for it. I stopped naming my fish. I can't keep track. Oh, this is a beauty. Just, Look at just that. Just keep them in the water, Norm. I'm going to pull this off to the bank so we can get them out of that current. And spin the boat. Yeah. He's a fighter. These bass really do put up a good fight. Oh. Yeah, they are strong. Pound for pound, one of the best fighting fish. He doesn't want to come in. We got a nice stout tippet. We're using uh, 3X fluorocarbon. Oh, he's big tip. putting up a good fight. Okay, just hold yourself, stall it. I'm going to drop the anchor yeah. so we can get the net on this fish. He'll move himself out. Can't believe the fight on these. Oh, that's a lovely fish. Holy mackerel. Can you hold them up? Yeah. There Beautiful. we go, nice. Good job, Ken. Excellent fish, well done. Very nice. Well, that's exciting. There you go. An Ontario smallmouth bass on a sinking crayfish that's pattern. That's a beautiful fish. Yeah, isn't that gorgeous? Look beautiful at the fish, fish you can get here. Southern Ontario has some fantastic, fantastic bass fishing. Ken got us into this fish today. He knew exactly what to do. We saw a lot of crayfish in the water. Uh, crawling around in the rocks and we tried to imitate those crayfish just putting that that fly down in the rocks and uh, we just put that fly down in the rocks to imitate the crayfish. Let's get him back in. Okay, we're gonna let him go. Nice and gentle. There you go. Mr. Bass. Well done, Norm. Excellent Thanks, job. Thanks, Ken. 
Catching fish gives me a big appetite. And all that rowing makes Ken a hungry man too. I row all day, it's a lot of work. I need to maintain a level of energy and stay quick on the ball. So I need to eat as well as you guys do. Ken is a full service guide. He always brings a tasty lunch, cooked on the riverbank and served hot. A fantastic yeah, way to take a breather and get energized for some more fishing. Yum. <laughs> Life is good. For surface fishing, we're using size two bass poppers in yellow and white. The leader has a six foot tapered butt and a 16 inch tippet of 3X fluorocarbon on a size seven floating line. Subsurface, we're using Ken's own crayfish pattern. There's a four foot fast sinking sinking tip tied to our floating line. Attached to that is a three foot 2X fluorocarbon tippet. Ontario rivers hold many species of fish other than bass. So it's always a good idea to rig several rods. Ken always has at least three rods rigged and ready to go. The popper rod, the crayfish rod, and also a heavy nine or 10 weight rod with a big streamer fly on a stout leader. Just in case we get a crack at a muskie or a pike. Okay, we were here uh, casting to the bank with poppers for uh, smallmouth and we got a big muskie chased the fly, followed the fly. So we cast back in with this big streamer fly and that muskie took it a second time and hammered it. We got him on now. So we're bass fishing for smallmouth and then we got a muskie as a side treat. Oh, look at that fish. Nice fish. That's a beautiful fish. They're, they are aggressive fish, these muskies. They just take they're more aggressive than a northern pike. They just take that thing and just hammer it. Okay, we're getting close to being ready to land them. Yeah. Wet the cradle. We don't want to tire them out too much. No, the water's warm. Nice, Excellent. Ken. There you go, a big muskie. And you know what? That's the first muskie I've ever caught. So that's pretty exciting. Whoa, he popped the fly right out. That's a gorgeous fish. And there's Ontario your Ontario musky. That's a pretty average size for the saugeen. Beautiful fish, beautiful predator. A little skinnier than lake fish, but they're gems. Unbelievably valuable fish. And put let him nice go as gentle, soon as yeah. possible. Yeah. And he'll let me know when he's ready to go. Pull his head right up into Beautiful the current. Fish. When he's ready to go, he's going to go, and he'll probably give me a good shower on the way back. Well done, Norm. Excellent. Nice fish. And there he goes. Beautiful. Way to go, Ken. Another this is uh, the fly we got him in. They, uh, they like to eat something quite uh, large. And uh, we stripped that thing in, oh, maybe seven or eight times, and he hammered it. So uh, when they miss the first uh, time, they, uh, they don't seem to get too shy. They are uh, still aggressive and going after that, uh, that bait the second time around. That was excellent. Excellent. Good casting. Well Thank done. You. Thank Congratulations. you. Congratulations. Thank you. Our most successful bass fly is Ken's own crayfish pattern. It's a fairly complex tie. It's tied on a Tiemco 200R number two hook. The body is made of orange furry foam, tan rabbit strip, tan chenille, and orange rabbit fur. It has medium black plastic eyes and medium lead eyes. The claws are made from orange pine squirrel zonker strips. For additional movement to attract the bass, Ken adds two strands of black crystal flash and a few tan black silly legs. Well, we're just casting here along the bank with a big musky fly. And this fish just yeah, took that drag. Is that good? This is a big fish. Fish just took the, uh, the streamer fly with a big fast strip. We're actually fishing for smallmouth bass, but might actually be a northern. Yeah. We got a big northern. That's not a muskie. Oh. Could be. I just had a quick glance at it. Yeah. I'm not 100 percent Yeah. Either way, nice it's fish. a big toothy critter. Oh, That's nice a muskie. fish. Muskie, yeah. Anyway, we were uh 
stripping this musky fly underneath these alder trees here and he just hammered it. Really a fighting fish. I think it is a big northern to be honest with you. Hey Norm, I'm just gonna pull you a little closer, get into some shallower water so we can get this fish in the cradle. Get the fly out of it and let him go as quickly as, as he can. Yeah, in this warm water condition, we want to fight the fish as short a period of time as possible because we want to let this fish go. The fish gets stressed when the water's warm. Okay, I'm gonna drop the anchor here myself. So I'm gonna try and land that here. Let's bring it around the other side of the boat here. Good job, Norm, you're fighting it perfectly. Oh. Beautiful. They're powerful fish. They are, let me and they, they yeah, strike, it is a big northern. They strike such viciousness. Beautiful. Beautiful. Excellent job. Great. Hold them in the cradle. That's exciting. Uh, first we thought we had a muskie because these northern pike uh, strike like a muskie, very viciously. Beautiful fish. Get them oxygenated. Now we tried to fight that fish for a very short period of time so we wouldn't put too much stress on him. We want him to get oxygenated here, letting the water sweep past his gills. We also have prime temperatures for these fish. It's in the, the high 60s, low 70s. There's an opportunity to release a fish unharmed. This is it. Again, we're gonna take lots of time, revive him, make sure he's ready to go. One of the great things about this smallmouth okay. bass water in Ontario is that you get other species like muskies, like these northern pike. So you get a real good variety of fish. It's quite exciting because you never know for sure what you're going to get. And there he goes. And he's happy. Wow, that's great, Ken. Nice release. Excellent good job. job. Well done. Congratulations. Thank you. Lovely fish. Look at he's just holding there in the water. And then he'll be off. Beautiful fish. Notice the color of the fish. They're quite well camouflaged against the bottom. Uh, they have that brown coloration, a little bit of banding. Very nice fish. I had a great time today smallmouth river fishing in southern Ontario with our guide, Ken Chandler. We had some explosive topwater action. We had bonus fish, pike and muskie. To learn more about fly fishing in southern Ontario, about Ken Chandler, or about other episodes of this show, please go to www.thenewflyfisher.com. And please join us for next week's show. Until then, tight lines.